Just find a, a nice comfortable seat. If you have any pillows to sit down on, this is always good because it'll help lift the hips and then you can kind of spill the belly forward and rock the shoulders back and the head stacks perfectly on top of the spine. So palms down to ground. We'll start to draw all of our awareness inward. So some of us have children at home, pets, birds, cats, dogs, bells, alarms, whistles. So we'll start to pull our awareness away from the external and in, uh, inward toward the breath. Just drop your awareness down into your belly to start. In the belly, in the hips, the base of the spine. And any gripping in the belly or the torso, see if you can allow that to soften. Follow your navel. In a natural breath, as you inhale, the navel will move away from the spine. And as you exhale, it draws in towards the spine. So uh, if you're not used to this, or if this is a new practice, you might stick your uh, index finger, put your index finger right in your navel. So inhale, belly expands. Exhale, navel in towards spine. Begin to engage your ujjayi breath, a slight aspirant sound in the back of the throat. And this gives us another focal point for the practice. And let's make a collective commitment and intention of following our ujjayi breath for the next hour and keeping our awareness internalized. So any distractions, they might pull our awareness out uh, of the present moment uh, and then it'll be a nice reminder to come back to the breath over and over and over again. This is the discipline. So let's bring our chin towards our chest and roll the right ear to the right shoulder and uh, let the weight of the head Go, gravity taking hold of your right ear. Now walk the left fingertips out beside the hip just until you feel the stretch. Three breaths. And we'll explore internal and external rotation with the left hand. So reach the fingertips away and then turn the palm up, thumb rolls back. Might crack your knuckles, yeah. And then turn the thumb down, internal rotation. So I want you to concentrate on the head of the humerus rolling inside of the shoulder girdle. So thumb back and thumb down. See how far you can turn that. And see how the stretch changes too. And you can roll out the wrist. If it's useful, if you want a little more pressure, take your right hand and bring it on top of your left ear. And curl the wrist. Two more breaths. And release. Hands to knees, chin to chest. Take a breath into the back of your neck and inhaling up the spine. Ah, and then left ear, left shoulder. This is a great way to kind of bring your awareness in, to center, and let the head go to the force of gravity. We're using it to our advantage to create some space, soften our tense muscles, 
we really are uh, the most relaxed when we're grounded and in our bodies, not up in our head. So walk the right fingertips away, just until you feel the stretch. And this is kind of subtle, and, uh, energy running all the way down the brachial plexus. Uh, you might feel some tingling in your uh, first two fingers or your pinky finger. And that'll really start to give us uh, some, some feedback and indication as to uh, where we're tight in the neck. So internal and external rotation, nice and slow when you're ready. Wiggle the fingers, curl the wrist. Might crack your knuckles. I always find that uh, when you get all those snaps and crackles and pops going, it's a, it's a really nice indication that energy is moving and, and freeing up and the joints are opening. Right. If you want a little more, take your left hand, bring it on top of the right ear, applying gentle, gentle pressure. Not too much, stay where it's just right. External rotation, thumb rolls back internal rotation and again concentrate on the head of the humerus rolling inside the shoulder girdle one more breath and release chin to chest again lengthen up through the spine take a breath into the back of the neck and then interlace your fingers bring them to the base of your skull and let the elbows draw in towards your head. So chin towards chest, gently press your head into your hands and we'll take three breaths. Relax the shoulders down the back, you might even draw the shoulder blades together slightly. And navel in towards spine as you exhale. and release. So we want to open up that pathway, uh, that bottleneck between the head and the gut. All right, so we'll begin our sun salutations. If you would, please come to standing. So top of the mat, samaste to he, bring hands to prayer. Right, look down at your feet, make sure they're hips width apart. Close the eyes, soften the knees so the energy can flow. When we lock the knees, we become a closed energetic circuit. And we want to be able to give energy into the earth and also receive. On an inhale, reach the arms overhead, stretching up towards the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Relax the back of your neck, shake your head, no. Shake your head, yes. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. So bend the knees a little bit, hearts forward. You can bring your palms to your shins, squeezing the shoulder blades together and down the spine. Inhale, broad collarbones up into the heart space. Exhale, plant the hands, and let's step the left foot back to start. Now, this is a great place to bring in your blocks. So we're going to take a modified version of sun salutation, coming into a low lunge. Okay, yeah. Bending into your front knee until it's over the ankle. Heart forward. Now, you can walk your hands up your front knee. To modify, start leaning back until your shoulders are over your hips, and then the arms become light. We can reach up. Three breaths. Activate your glutes slightly, drawing your right hip back in space, and lift up from the rib cage. One more breath here. Maybe you can lean back, exhale, plant the hands, and we can move the blocks off to the side. Tuck the back toes, lift the knee. All right. And we'll press back into downward facing dog. Pedal out your heels. And you might get some snaps and crackles and pops out of the ankles. You can lift the heels, bring them over to the right. Inhale to center, bring the heels over to the left. 
and meeting in the middle. Heel in line with second and third toe. Externally rotate the upper thighs and get heavy in the big toe ball mounds of your feet and your heels. Like lift all 10 toes. Take another breath here. Lifting the hips higher. And then exhale, lower the knees. So down dog is eventually a resting posture. Not so much in the beginning, uh, and that's okay. Let's move through a few rounds of cat and cow just to continue to wake up the spine. So exhale for cat, tuck, rounding. Inhale for cow, heart forward. Exhale, cat, tuck. Begin to elongate the breath even more. Hips lift up and back, heart forward, inhaling and exhaling, cat tuck. Meeting in cow, so heart forward. You might even scoot the knees back a little bit. Glide the chest forward and we'll come into cat bow. So lower down, scoot the hips back behind you like an inchworm. Bring big toes to touch, press your feet into the floor, inhale, lifting the heart. Now elbows in towards the side body, so maybe let them wing out and draw them in a couple times. Swing out and draw them in. Roll the shoulders back and down. Take one more breath here. Extending through the crown of the head. Exhale through table, back to downward facing dog. Tuck the toes under, lift the hips high. One more breath, nice and slow as you exhale. And I find it's much easier to walk the hands back towards the feet for beginners. So let's try that for this first round while we're warming up. Walk the hands back towards your feet, coming into your forward fold, bend the knees deeply so your hands are on the floor. And inhale, lengthen, bring the palms to the shins and slide the shoulder blades down the back. And your hips are flipping up behind you. So heart forward, exhale, fold, draw yourself in, and we'll roll up to standing nice and slow. Samaste to he, hands to prayer. Return to the top of the mat, and we'll go through round two. Inhale, upward salute, exhale, forward fold. Lengthen the spine on the in-breath. Exhale, draw yourself in. Now you can start to lengthen the legs a little bit just until you feel that pull in the hamstrings. Now we're still warming up. Bring your blocks in if they're available to you. And we'll step the left foot back this time. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Switch, right foot. <laughs> right foot back and lower the knee. So coming into a low crescent lunge, knee is over the ankle. And taking a moment to ground first. Press into your back foot and shin. Dip down into your hips. So we're gonna get a nice stretch going. And then Muladhara Bandha. So here's where you wanna start to lift the pelvic floor and that's going to help to uh, elevate the upper body. If you lift the pelvic floor, you'll start to feel yourself rise up easily. Bring your hands to your knees, lean back. Once the shoulders again, get over the hips and it's, uh, the body becomes light. And we can reach the arms overhead. So this is plenty. You can stay here at heart center or begin to get that energy to move from a nice solid base up into the belly to fire the belly, the heart space, and then it becomes a bit of a back bend. So you might Really sink deep down into the hips, and then again, engaging Muladhara Bandha. See if you can lift up, activate your glutes slightly. So we want the stretch and the lift. When the body becomes really, really open here, we tend to go way too deep. So let's just back off a little bit, and we can get more elevation in the heart center. One more breath. And exhale, fold forward, move the blocks off to the side, plant the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the knee, press out through that heel, yeah. Now you want to press into your palms, activate your core, now hollow it out, like, and step that left foot back, there you go. All right, so five breaths in, down dog. 
Again, it is a resting posture. If you need to bring your knees to the mat at any time, child's pose is a wonderful alternative while we're building strength and learning to follow the intelligence of the breath. Hips are lifting up and back. Now the knees can be bent. You want to draw your belly towards the upper thighs. Spread the fingers out wide. Now your upper thighs are in, in or excuse me, external rotation and your inner arms are in external rotation. So from the knee up to the hip, from the elbows up to the shoulders are in an external rotation. And it gets a little tricky because lower the knees down to the mat. I'll show you. From the elbow down is in an internal rotation. So you want to ground through the index finger ball mound of your hand and the moon center or the meaty part of your thumb here. So while from the elbow to the shoulder is in an external rotation, so the eye of the elbow comes forward. You can try wagging your elbows in and out. So in and out, in and out. So you want the eyes of the elbows to shine forward. Slide the shoulder blades down the back, inhale, glide forward. Now you can even kind of scoot your knees back behind you a little. Exhale, lower down. So I'm gonna to go to the side so you can see here. Uh, as you lower down, your, your hips are up like an inchworm. Now you can scoot the hips back behind you. Again, big toes touch. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower down. Big toes touch, zip up through the center line of the body. Now you can even bring your thumbs down towards your rib cage. And this helps to lift the heart. We're gonna do this one more time. Lifting the heart, rolling the shoulders back. And notice the difference with the hand placement. Spread the fingers out, exhale, lower down. So again, try walking the hands back a little bit. Elbows squeeze in, shoulder blades down the back. Last one, inhale, cobra. And if you want to come into a full upward facing dog, notice how I just slid forward here. So now the hips are reaching towards the back of the wrists. And this takes a little bit of time before we can, uh, you know, lower down from a cat bow and then come all the way up into an upward facing dog. One more breath and lower the knees. Come to the table, tuck the toes under, lift the hips high. Five breaths in your down dog. Relax. And I want you to think about the spirals. So from the knee up, external rotation of the inner thighs. From the elbow up to the shoulder, external rotation of the upper arms. Upper arms, upper thighs externally rotating. From the elbow to the wrist, internal rotation. From the knees to the big toe ball mounds, internal rotation. It's a dual spiral going on. So it's a lot to pay attention to. One more breath and this time we'll take the feet to the hands. So look forward and you want to keep the, the legs long. Lift from your hips. It's like a Frankenstein walk. See how far you can go and then bend your knees, come all the way to your hands, sit low into your bottom, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Draw yourself in, you might catch your heels, you might elbows out to the side, forehead towards the knees. And we'll begin to reverse swan dive. So you want to come up with a flat back. And you can uh, extend the arms out or just bring hands to prayer. Nice flat back, depending on your, the space that's available to you. And finding Tadasana. All right, so modification with adding a low lunge. We're going to move into now a Sir Namaskar B formal, excuse me, A. All right, inhale. We're not quite at B yet. All right, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Plant the hands. Step the left foot way back, followed by the right for plank. 
Lowering down through Chaturanga Dandasana. Elbows in towards the side body. Use your toes to propel yourself forward. Inhale, full upward facing dog. And roll on your toes or tap, tap back to down dog. Five breaths here. Now right foot steps forward between the hands followed by the left. And a nice drill here is to draw your left toes and drag them up to meet the right. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Now we can interlace the hands behind the back and roll the shoulders open, getting a little deeper into uh, your shoulders, your neck. Might look right and left, maybe bend and extend the legs. So you have different variations to play with and bring them into the sequence. Yogi toe hold is a nice option. And on an inhale, coming up with a flat bar. All right, so Sir Namaskar A, one more time. Inhale, upward salute. Maybe a slight back bend now that we're getting warmer. Exhale, forward fold. Lengthen on an in breath. Plant the hands, right foot back this time. You always want to switch. Pick up your left foot, send it back to meet the right. Plank pose. Now let's hold here and plank for just a moment. And you can kind of palm the mat, shift the weight a bit. Reach back through your heels, draw tailbone down, heart forward. So you want to look only with your eyeballs towards the horizon. Crown of the head is forward. So uh, ever so slightly tuck the chin in towards the chest. And then lower down through Chaturanga Dandasana. Use your toes to draw yourself forward. Remember, your hip bones are reaching towards the back of your wrists as you take your cobra into full upward facing dog. One breath. And exhale back, downward facing dog. And you can roll on the toes or tap tap. And breathe. All right, so it's working. You can feel your body getting a little hotter. Maybe your breath is slightly labored, so really draw in your awareness and your pranayama. Life force restraint. <laughs> Think of your pranayama as mm, the reins on a horse. Yeah? This is called the, the wind horse and the Shambhala teachings. Now, left foot forward between the hands. There you go. Now, that can be a little difficult, just that act of stepping forward. So you have some options. You want to round through the spine. You can also take a bit of a step out to the side and then move your hands to frame your foot. Or if you stop short here, take your ankle, elbow down. All right, so shift the weight to the left foot and then drag your right toes up to meet the left. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Give it a little shake, a little shimmy. Oh, halfway lift. Interlace the fingers. You can also find reverse prayer. So that feels really good. And then exhale, fold in for three breaths. And let's bring in those spirals of the legs. So take a look at your kneecaps. Are they pointing towards your eyeballs, straight forward? Or are they knocking together or opening out to the side? So find that external rotation of your inner thighs, your upper thighs. And then see if you can find that internal spiral from the knees to your big toe ball mounts. Spread the toes out and inhale up with a nice flat back, keeping that external rotation of the upper thighs. Very good, release hands to prayer. Okay, so stepping forward, I'm gonna just take a minute. Um, stepping forward can be um, challenging. It is challenging at the beginning. Downward facing dog is not a resting pose when we're new to yoga, but eventually it does become one. Um, 
And then hopping. Hopping is something that we have to build up to. So I'm going to do one uh, round as an example, and then we'll do a final uh, Serial Mascar A with hopping back to plank and hopping from down dog forward into Uttanasana forward fold. And then uh, we'll start to bring that into our practice as we move on to Sir Namaskar B. All right, so I'll demonstrate once and then we'll do this together. Inhale, arms up, exhale down, inhale, lengthen. Now, whenever you're uh, inhaling, you're moving a part of the body away from center line. And whenever you're exhaling, you're closing off. So inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale, hop back, chaturanga, exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling back, inhale, look forward, exhale, hop, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold, inhaling up, exhale, prayer. All right, here we go. You ready? Look down at your feet. <laughs> You're coming out of frame here. <laughs> Inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, lengthen. Bend your knees. Exhale, plant the hands. Hop back. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog, and breathe. <laughs> it's plenty. So as you can probably tell, just from one round of that, hopping is very invigorating. So it really starts to get the fire going and the blood pumping. Take an in-breath, look forward, and as you exhale, whoo, hop to the hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, folding in. Inhale out and up, reverse swan dive. And hands to heart. So that was stay to heat. So there's your Cedar Narm Scar B working, or excuse me, A. I keep getting those two mixed up. Uh, words, words. All right, so we worked on stepping forward. Now with that, I'd like to demonstrate uh, what is ideal for working through um, coming from down dog, stepping forward into, let's say, Virabhadrasana 1. So uh, you want to learn how to round through the spine. So this is a really nice uh, demo or drill, if you will, for teaching people how to curl through the spine. Because if your foot is stopping short, then we're not including the entire wave of the spine. So coming into three-legged dog and then rounding knee to nose to slide the foot forward between the hands is a great way to um, bring that, that wave in through the spine. So we'll add that as we're stepping forward into Virabhadrasana 1. So the difference between Sri Namaskar A and Sri Namaskar B is two poses. Utkatasana chair pose. <laughs> a lot going on there too, we'll discuss it. And warrior one. All right, so and you can choose whether or not you want to step back or, or add in the hop, depending on your breath and uh, what you need for today. All right, so moving on to Sri Namaskar B. Here we go. Let me sit back. That's a good spot. Sit back into your hips. Draw tailbone down. Now you can always keep the hands forward, shoulders back and down, hands at prayer. Or, just like in our low lunge, you can begin to reach the arms up. And we'll take five breaths here. It's our first chair. We want to build some heat. Quads burning. And inhaling up. So root down through the feet. Lift up. Open the heart. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands, walk or hop back into your plank pose. Phalakasana. Eyes of the elbows forward, elbows in towards the side body as you lower down through your plank. And you can modify with using cat bow and cobra, 
or come forward on an in-breath into your full upward facing dog. Exhale back, down dog, roll on the toes or tap, tap. Inhale, point the right toes back behind you, sweep the leg high, three-legged dog, round the knee to the nose, curl through the spine, so bring your forehead towards your knee and then see if you can slide that right foot forward between the hands. Very good. All right, now I like to shorten my stance here. So you can step your left foot out to the side a bit and draw the heel down. Square the hips off to the back of the mat, bend into your front knee and rise up. Now again, you can walk up your leg. And breathe. <laughs> Shoulders over hips, just like in our low lunge. Anchoring into the pinky toe edge of the back foot. Lift up the rib cage. Lift the heart, leaning back, inhale, and exhale, reach forward, hinging from your hips. You're folding down as you exhale. Plant the hands and step that right foot back. Shift the hips forward, coming into plank. Now you can always skip that and just rest in down dog if needed. Coming forward into plank, lower down, chaturanga or cat bow. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Other side, inhale, lifting the left leg high, three-legged dog. And around knee to nose, forehead towards the knee, slide that left foot forward between the hands, and let's set up our base. So you might shorten your stance, draw that right foot out to the side, Left hip, if you could bring your thumb to that left hip crease and draw it back in space. So your hips are square to the back of the mat. And you might even reach your arms back, halfway lift, and then reach the arms forward and up. Breathe here. <sighs> Relax the shoulder blades down the back. Bend into the front knee as you anchor into the outer edge of the back foot. So you want to lift out of the arch of your back foot. And we bring our hands to your rib cage. Kind of lift the rib cage up. Inhale, lifting the heart, lifting the gaze. And exhale, plant the hands. So you might step that right foot back and then pick up the left foot and send it back to plank or down dog. Your choice. Lower down through chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. We'll meet there for five breaths. And count the seconds of your inhalation. Try and elongate the exhale so it's twice as long as the inhale. If we've lost connection to our breath, then let's have the uh, honesty and the discipline to lower the knees and rest in child's pose until you can get that uh, life force restraint back in your hands like the reins of a horse. Good, when you're ready, return to down dog. If you're in child, on an inhale, gaze forward. On an exhale, hop to the hands. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Draw yourself in. So forehead below the knees now. The hamstrings are getting longer. Sitting back into your hips. Coming down into chair pose. Tailbone draws under. So notice how my back is rounded here. So activate your fulcrum point, your deep lower belly, and then lift the heart, and hands can come to prayer, fingertips out, or reach the arms overhead. And look down at your knees, they're pointing forward. Okay, one more breath, sit a little deeper. And inhale, up to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. So that's your Sir Namaskar A and B, working up to a hopping um, practice. So we'll go through Sir Namaskar B 
one more time. I'll give you some more variations to work with. Um, so I'll demonstrate one of the, the options and then we'll try together. So we've been working on hopping from our forward fold back into plank, right? This time we're going to come from our forward fold to the bottom of chaturanga, all right? So uh, I'll demonstrate again, halfway lift. Let me catch my breath. Plant the hands and we're hopping back into plank at the bottom of our chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Now the other thing that I want to uh, bring into today's practice is rolling on the toes. So we're gonna take some time here um, before our last round of Surya Namaskar B and learn how to flip over the feet. So this is another thing, a uh, technique that it needs a little bit of finesse, and it's really helpful when an instructor takes the time to break it down. So, I tend to start, when I'm teaching this technique, from down dog, and then just rock back and forth from down dog to plank a few times, and then start to make this bigger. So you're coming from down dog, you're rolling through the spine, rolling through the spine, and it's about right here when the shoulders get over the wrists. If you keep going, you just flip over the feet and then roll over the toes as you lift the hips high. So starting with just coming from down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, into plank, your Phalakasana, and then rolling through the spine all the way in to your up dog and you flip over the toes. Sometimes we have a tendency to stop short because we don't trust. Once the shoulders get over the wrists, if you keep the hips lifted and the heart lifted and keep working, again, your hip bones towards the back of your wrists, you'll flip over the toes and you'll get that full wave completion through the spine. And the toes are just a part of the, they're, they're part of the process. They're along for the ride. So let's try and bring that into our final Sir Namaskar B. So we'll come to that first practice set a couple times. If you haven't done it already. Yeah. Down dog. Big, 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 big wave. Keep it going. Flip. Up dog. Flip. Down dog. Now make your way to a forward fold when you're done playing. Shake it out. Reset. Standing. Just taking your time. Finding your sama state to heat, tadasana pose. Let's take five breaths. So take a moment just to wipe the slate clean. Maybe refresh your step, feel the texture of your mat. <sighs> the temperature of your body. The air on your skin. The breath moving in and out. The navel. Yeah, come back to that. As you inhale, natural breath, the belly expands. The navel moves away from the spine. Soften the knees. Tailbone releases down. Exhale, navel in towards the spine. So the whole body is expanding and contracting. Expanding and contracting like a jellyfish. Slow-mo jellyfish. <laughs> All right, in our final round, Sir Namaskar B. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, sit low into your chair pose, Utkatasana. Inhale to standing, leaning back, heart lifts. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, lengthen. Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, hopping back to the bottom of your chaturanga. It's a little tricky. You gotta bend the elbows while your feet are in the air. <laughs> Inhale, upward facing dog. 
Exhale, roll over the toes, back to down dog. Point the right toes back behind you, sweep the leg high. Three-legged dog, round knee to nose. Good. Step the right foot forward between the hands, left heel down, hips square to the back of the mat. This time, let's reach the arms back behind us. Interlace the fingers, halfway lift, bend into your front knee. Inhale all the way up, heart lifts, and we'll roll the shoulders open, folding forward. So we're just adding on to our Sierra Namaskar B. Opening the shoulders a little deeper. Release the hands, inhale all the way up. Virabhadrasana one. And exhale, fold, plant the hands. Step back into plank. Now you can keep that right leg lifted, that's just more flare. You can even bring it up high, lower down. Inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog, roll over your toes, take a breath. Good, last one, last side. Inhale, left leg high, three-legged dog. Rounding knee to nose, right foot steps forward, left foot steps forward, right heel turns down, hips square to the back of the mat, reach back behind you, interlace your finger, fingers, knuckles reach away, squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift from your heart, inhale, open up the chest, and you're anchoring in the outer edge of your back foot as you dive forward, roll the shoulders open, humble warrior. One more breath here. Look down at your left foot. Release the hands. Reaching forward and up. Inhale. Warrior one. Exhale. Plant the hands. Stepping back into plank. Lower down. Chaturanga. Option to keep the leg lifted. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Exhale. Down dog. Five breaths here. So now we're really hot. <laughs> Gazing forward on an inhale. Exhale, hop to the hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Sitting back into your hips. Exhale. And inhale, reach the arms up. Ukatasana chair pose. Inhale to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Close your eyes and breathe. Just feel the effects of Sir Namaskar A and B, sun salutation. Okay. So this draws up a very distinct quality. Right? It's the energy of the sun. And it's, uh, we're 45 minutes into practice, so we'll start to use this heat now to get into the hips and wind down. But next session, we'll get into uh, Chandra Namaskar, which is a moon salutation. And although it still builds heat, a heat of sorts, it's a cooling practice. So um, I just want you to really anchor in the effects of the sun salutation and its effect on the body, um, the cells. Yeah, and it's enough. It's enough uh, to, to start a home practice with a, a, a good foundation of Sir Namaskar A and B, the sun salutation. We're just getting our energy moving. So.